How do our bodies react to stress or danger? How do our bodies help protect us from cold or heat? Why do we grow? And why do we stop growing? What kinds of changes occur during puberty? Answers to these and many other questions lie in hormones and the endocrine system. A city is a complex community. Millions of people perform thousands of different kinds of jobs. Streets and highways provide transportation networks, enabling people and products to get from one place to another. These activities and many others need to be coordinated and regulated in order for a city to function smoothly. Traffic lights, for example, help ensure the smooth flow of vehicles and pedestrians by signaling them when to go and when to stop. Imagine the gridlock that would result if traffic lights were to fail. Or if each light wasn't synchronized to work with other lights. The human body is far more complex than any city. It is made up of many different organs and trillions of cells whose activities also need to be carefully regulated in order for it to function. The body has two main systems for coordinating and regulating its activities. One is the nervous system, which consists of the brain, spinal cord, and a network of nerves that branch throughout the body. The other system is the endocrine system. The endocrine system consists of different endocrine glands. These glands produce chemicals called hormones that the body needs. Endocrine glands secrete or release their hormones into the vast network of blood vessels that make up the circulatory system. Carried along in the blood, hormones are chemical messengers that reach cells throughout the body. Each kind of hormone acts only on specific kinds of target cells. A target cell has a receptor on its surface. A receptor is a place where a hormone can latch onto the target cell. Hormones and receptors fit together like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. A specific hormone will attach only to the receptor sites of a specific kind of cell. When a hormone reaches a target cell, it causes the cell to respond. For example, a hormone may signal the cell to produce certain chemicals the body needs. Hormones may also signal cells to stop producing certain chemicals. One example of how hormones work is provided by the parathyroid glands. These four small glands are embedded in a larger endocrine gland called the thyroid. The parathyroid glands secrete a hormone called parathyroid hormone. The target cells for this hormone are in the bones. When it reaches its target cells, the hormone causes these bone cells to release calcium into the blood. The body needs a certain amount of calcium. The endocrine system works more slowly than the nervous system, which also regulates the activities of our bodies. For example, if you touch a hot iron, the nervous system senses the heat almost instantaneously and sends signals to muscles that make you pull your hand back. In other situations, the nervous system works closely with the endocrine system in ways that are slower but more long-lasting than when the nervous system responds by itself. Imagine you are walking down a dark alley. You feel alone, vulnerable, and scared. Through your sense of sight and other senses, the nervous system detects what may be a dangerous situation and signals the endocrine system to respond. In response to these signals, your adrenal glands, located on top of your kidneys, secrete two hormones, epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, and norepinephrine. 
These hormones have several different effects on your body. They cause your heart to beat faster, blood pressure to increase, and they direct blood to muscles and the brain. All these responses prepare you to fight or run away. In fact, together they are called the fight or flight response. The fight or flight response has helped soldiers to perform and survive in combat even when they have gone without sleep for days and were otherwise near exhaustion. But even in situations that aren't dangerous, the same hormones may be at work. A student giving a piano recital is an example. Sitting down at the keyboard, she feels nervous about performing in front of an audience. Her heart beats faster. Her blood pressure rises. These and other responses result from the actions of epinephrine and other hormones and make her more alert and better able to perform. Normally, hormones do their job and then are quickly broken down into simpler elements. The body maintains a delicate internal balance. If epinephrine and other hormones remained at higher than normal levels in the student's blood after her recital, they could cause harm. The proper functioning of endocrine glands and the hormones they secrete are vital to our health. This is Dr. David Bloomgarten, an endocrinologist. An endocrinologist is a doctor who specializes in hormones and endocrine glands. If there is too much production or too little production of a particular hormone, one can see changes in the body that are off the normal path. When there's too much, that can be a problem. When there's too little, that can be a problem. The endocrine system is a fascinating system, one which is constantly run by checks and balances. The body has ways of detecting how much of a hormone is in the blood and then directing the appropriate endocrine glands to turn on or off as needed. A thermostat illustrates how this system works. A thermostat monitors the inside temperature of a house and signals a furnace to turn on or off in order to keep the temperature close to a desired level. Suppose the thermostat is set at 68 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 20 degrees Celsius. If the temperature falls below 68 degrees, the thermostat senses this. It then signals the furnace to turn on. The heat from the furnace causes the temperature to rise. When the temperature reaches 68 degrees again, the thermostat senses this. It then signals the furnace to turn off. Like a house, we too have a kind of thermostat that helps us maintain a fairly constant temperature inside our bodies, even when the temperature outside changes. Imagine you are waiting to be picked up by a school bus on a cold winter day. It helps if you are dressed warmly, but your body also has ways of helping you cope with the cold. A part of the brain called the hypothalamus plays the role of the body's thermostat. The hypothalamus monitors the temperature inside the body and helps keep it around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. If the temperature drops below this level, the hypothalamus signals a nearby endocrine gland, the pituitary. In response to these signals from the hypothalamus, the pituitary releases a hormone that acts upon the thyroid, an endocrine gland located in the lower neck. This hormone is called TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. When stimulated by TSH, the thyroid in turn releases another hormone, thyroxine. Thyroxine causes cells throughout the body to release more heat, just as the furnace in a house turns on to release more heat. As a result, the body's internal temperature rises. <laughs> 